I would be quite keen to just get a little bit of your perspective in dealing with um, egoism. I think, you know, I mean, we are type A personalities. We are the hardest of the heart, you know, we are ego. I can do what he can't do, I can do better than what he can do, and I can only do what he cannot do. And there's one cardiac surgeon, um, this is me as a cardiac surgeon speaking, so hands up. <laughs> and a very senior colleague, not, not current, but past, he went to a patient and he said, you need this complex operation. There are only two people who can do that. One is me. The other one is God. I have my doubts about his competence. So that level of ego we are talking. Now some of it you need. To be fair, we are taking someone's life in our hands. I'm going to stop that heart and restart. You need some gusto. You can't be a wimp there. But you need to have the humility. And humility is taken as a sign of incompetence sometimes. And I feel it's a sign of supreme confidence. But ego. And we can't overcome that. So please uh, share this. I'm sure everyone has it in some form or the other. Some may more, some may less. But it's, it's an inherent human quality. <laughs> I can't live without it. Can't live with it. Please. Thank you. Just being able to go inside and if I want to deal with ego, then I'll start going on that inner journey. And when I go on that inner journey, I realize that my identity is not dependent on position and all the externals that were artificial and could be taken away from me at any moment. But my identity and my personality is actually based on my own inner qualities. And when I'm in touch with those inner qualities of kindness and goodness and the other things that are actually inherent within the being that I am, then there's a very natural humility that comes out. Um, there's value for the self, there's self-respect, because I'm now seeing the qualities that are there within the soul. But in that state of self-respect, it also then triggers the possibility of giving respect to others. And where there's ego, there isn't any respect given to anyone else. And of course, then in turn, you want their respect, but they're not ready to give you respect either. And so that's quite an ego crusher when I'm expecting everybody to say, wonderful, wonderful, and they're not. <laughs> but in knowing myself, I go inside. And so that self-respect is automatically filled with a humility in which I'm able to give respect. And so relationships become very sweet. Yes, thank you. I think that is so important. I mean, we have got to rise beyond. So essentially, by the messages that you gave Raj Yoga, as well as a few minutes of ERO, <laughs> event response outcome, we can overcome that. It's the outcome that we do to the uh, event and how we respond. Uh, whilst anybody has any other question, I will ask uh, one more. And that is, I think, one of the things, you know, we very rightly, you described, Mike, um, this place as a school, a university, a hospital, because we are all in various stages of ailments and looking for enlightenment or learning or... Um, but I think... One of the things, if I can just impress you a little bit to stress on, is, is how we surround ourselves, the situational, the, the, you know, certain aspects of unavoidability and certain aspects of escapism, and how, how do I sort of manage myself within some level of inevitability, like you said, accept we all seem, we are very smart beings. Humans are the smartest on them, clearly we are. 
And we are huge escapists. We, we will escape from a situation, just find a reason. And so I think it's, it's that facing the inevitable. You know, we all need some guidance on that. Nothing will happen. It won't end us. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> Tell us. Thank you. <laughs> you first. <laughs> well, I hope I'm representing everyone on that point. <laughs> When there are situations that are inevitable, when there are situations that are challenging, I just need to be able to tap into my own inner power. And it doesn't happen at that moment, but I need to have given time to myself over a period yeah. beforehand to prepare myself for whatever life may throw at me. And if I've been recharging my own inner battery, on a daily basis, not just once a month, once a week, but a little bit of time for myself every day, even a few minutes every day, then I have that capacity to be able to face the situation and do what is necessary. I can't predict what every situation is going to be, but what I can do is make sure that I keep my mind very clear and very clean so that then I know what it is I need to do at that moment. And so meditation is the practice of clearing stuff away so that my mind can be clear and clean. Yes, please. We've got a mic for you. Um, thank you very much um, for your help today. You've been, uh, allowed me to be here. I feel very fortunate. One of the probably the most difficult things that we have ourselves being healthcare professionals is, you know, we spend the whole day, a long 12 hour shift, caring for others and having that as our priority. So as, as you mentioned, Mike, we go to school, we go to university, and again, this is how we taught. This is how we, we set up our minds to do it. Can you give us some, if you had to give us three tips on how to get home and get, make ourselves the priority instead of being making the others the priority. Does it make sense? Yeah, indeed. I would suggest that if I recognize the value of time for myself, then start the day with just a few minutes. And starting the day well means that you're more likely to move in the right direction through the day. And so priority would be start the day with time for yourself, for reflection, reading something that's going to be uplifting and helpful for you. Um, you know yourself and you know what uplifts you, what it is that brings you down. So just to give yourself that space, something to listen, something to read, whatever it may be. But if I can make that my priority, start the day well, then the rest of the day will flow more smoothly. Thank you. I think it is really so important for us to be reminded all the time, isn't it? We tend to forget. I think part of what you are saying is we know all this, but we completely escape, we completely forget. And so what we have here is giving us guidance and reminding us and giving us small sort of tips and tricks and techniques to try and tell us that. Just remind yourself every day, just for a little bit, think about yourself, become the center for yourself. And I guess it's, it's what will take us there. Yes, please. Oh, can we? Thanks. If you just uh, hold the mic and tell us. Hello. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us all. It's been a, a wonderful way to spend an, an afternoon and an evening. Um, the topic was stress management. And I think one of the biggest things that causes us stress sometimes as human beings is change. We don't like change as human beings. It makes our heart rate go up, makes our breathing a little bit quicker. And, but however, there's a Greek philosopher that said the only thing that's constant in life is change. So what's the best way of dealing with change? Yeah, right. <laughs> and without change, we can't live either. You, know, you, can't, you can't be without change. Change is ongoing, change is constant. Yep, thank you, please. Embrace it. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. 
And so rather than reject it or react to it, accept it, embrace it. And when I embrace change, then what I'm doing is looking for what is it that is going to be of benefit for me within all of this. Um, I'll give you the example of COVID, not from the NHS perspective, but from a very external perspective, a layperson. Um, COVID comes and you say, this is absolutely awful. I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do the other. And people who allowed themselves to think like this, reacting to the change, rejecting the change, found themselves becoming, on an inner level, much weaker and less able to cope. And there were other people who said, okay, well, I can't do this, this, and this, but what can I do? And they started learning new things. They started spending time in a very beautiful way with the family. So look for what is it that change is asking of me and take that as the opportunity and move forward with that. So embracing change means taking advantage of it. Um, give you another example, age. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and it creeps up on everyone. <laughs> and some deal with it with dignity and some react against it. But it's normal, it's natural, it's okay. And so can I see what are the advantages that it's bringing me? and accept those and benefit from those. There are things that I can do today that I couldn't have done 20, 30, 40 years ago. And so embrace it. There's, uh, just pass it here, please. Thank you. And I'll come to you, yeah. Uh, the theme for today's talk was about stress management. In the media, we are bombarded with all these news, what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening with the gun violence in the US, what's happening with climate change. These are things which seemingly, seemingly make us feel helpless. This, it's out there, I'm here, I'm focused on healthcare, I'm focused on my operation next. But these are additional sources of stress. What is it that I as an individual can say to myself to not be impacted by what all? The media is bombarding us. I think the message that's coming back to everyone again and again is find that sacred space inside in which there is that power and stillness and peace and truth. And the more I stay connected with that, then I'll ask myself the question, well, what can I contribute in a positive way to whatever it is that's going on? I won't allow the news from out there to create a disturbance inside, but climate change, there are things I can do. Let me do that. Um, the war in Ukraine, I might not be able to do something instantly, but what I can do is send good wishes, I can send vibrations of peace, and they'll reach somewhere, somehow. So just to stay still inside and be in charge of what's going on inside of me, rather than let other things take charge of what's going on. Thank you. Yes, please. We've got one more. Here. Here, here. I'll come to you after. I heard the, I heard the word helplessness the feeling of helplessness and also I already had in mind the introduction given I forgot the name of Miss oh, of the doctor I... yes and um, while you were saying that I also I don't know if it's true but I also felt the word helplessness that there's so many people still to be that need help and the people in the hospitals and in the care system that they have to keep on working. There is no time, etc. So I don't know, Sister Genti, maybe you can um, say something about that. All those helpless <laughs> people in the hospitals still wanting out of kindness to take care of people. 
the medics, the nurses. Um, if we look at the practical reality of trying to cope with the six and a half million people who are not yet receiving the attention they require, and I try to solve it on a practical, physical level, I don't know how far that's possible. And I know that the different trusts are doing the best that they can. But what we can do is definitely, in meditation, send out our vibrations of light and love. And we have a lot of people here who ask us to do that for their relatives or their friends, people who they're in touch with. And they report back and come back and say that that person felt better when they felt those vibrations reach them. Um, we do that in our morning class. We come together for meditation, and usually at either 7 o'clock or some other point during the program, we share the names of people who have specially requested for um, help in that way. And so then we get feedback, and so many people report back that they felt sustained, they felt supported, they felt encouraged, inspired, and maybe even sometimes had the power to actually be able to help themselves become better. And so that's something that everybody can do. Just send out those vibrations of good wishes to all those who are in need of help. So I think that's an important addition to whatever else all of you are doing. I know that you're running against the clock and trying to do more than is humanly possible, but I think this can also support. I think the, the, we are coming up to the last question in the interest of time. I think helplessness shouldn't be taken as a true helplessness. I think, I think what Pradeep Bhai meant was a situational helplessness. It's not literally giving up and saying, I can't do anything, I'm helpless. I think it's just the frustration of trying to do more. Um, I am coming to you. If your question is quick, I might give the next person an answer, uh, opportunity, but we are running out of time. Please. Yeah. Pain is inevitable and suffering is optional. And my question is procrastination. So I'm suffering from procrastination. So what is the solution? <laughs> I know what it is, but still is happening yeah. naturally. I think it's important just to know that there will be a point of arrival. And so what I can do is to just simply increase my own tolerance capacity and reflection, meditation, increases that in a very, very profound way. Thank you, Om Shanti. Last question. Yes, please. Uh, we'll probably end after that and carry on. Hello. I don't have a question. I just have a comment. And, uh, a bit closer to you. Uh, yeah. I just have a comment. Uh, at Brahma Kumari's, uh, just, Sister Janti just mentioned about sending good vibrations in help helpless situations. At Brahma Kumaris, they have a world meditation hour every third Sunday where collectively vibrations are sent to the whole world in that pursuit. Yes. Thank you for letting us know and hopefully we will be able to join. And that's actually tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow is the third Sunday when we do have our meditation hour, especially for peace and help for all those in need of help. So that's from 6.30 to 7.30. If you can join us here, you're most welcome. But otherwise, just link up and have that time of silence in your own home. That would also be very, very powerful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm terribly sorry I have to end this because we, we could carry on. I'm <laughs> sure we can carry on. There's so much to do. but like all good things in life. <laughs> so thank you very much for being with us and sharing this Q&A and thank you for enlightening us and trying to give us a little bit of semblance of what path we could take and hopefully we will go and <clears throat> continue our journey. I don't think we uh, are not doing at all. I hope some of us are doing some or all, but we need to do more. 
and thank you for your support and uh, gratitude as well to the NHS. Thank you very much.